Solar energy is a renewable source of energy that is gaining ground because of the benefits it offers. Solar power panels serve the purpose of absorbing solar energy and converting it to electric power through the photovoltaic effect. A home solar system must provide enough electric energy to fulfill all the power requirements of a home. Heart load carrying solar systems are also available. It should also be capable of providing AC power as traditionally all homes use AC power to operate lighting systems, gadgets, appliances and equipment such as computers, refrigerators, mixers, fans, air conditioners, TVs and music systems. So what are the parts of an off-grid or a standalone solar PV system? The solar panels will absorb the radiation and the electric current is given to the charge controller. A charge controller or charge regulator is basically a voltage and current regulator to keep batteries from overcharging. It regulates the voltage and current coming from the solar panels going to the battery. The batteries are connected in between the charge controller and inverter. The basic function of an inverter is to convert the DC power that solar panels create to AC power that is usable in homes and businesses. And if there is any DC load, then an extra connection will be there in between the battery and a DC panel board. Since the output generated by the PV system varies significantly depending on the time and geographical location, it becomes of utmost importance to have an appropriate selection of the site for the standalone PV installation. Thus, the following points must be considered for the assessment and selection of locations for installation. Minimum shade, it must be made sure that the selected site either at rooftop or ground should not have shades or should not have any structure that intercepts the solar radiation falling on the panels to be installed. Also, make sure that there won't be any structural construction soon surrounding the installation that might cause the problem of shading. Surface area, the surface area of the site at which the PV installation is intended should be known to have an estimation of the size and number of panels required to generate the required power output for the load. This also helps to plan the installation of inverter, converts, and battery banks. Rooftop. In the case of the rooftop installation the type of roof and its structure must be known. In the case of tilt roofs, the angle of tilt must be known and necessary mounting must be used to make the panels have more incidence of solar radiation. That is, ideally the radiation angle must be perpendicular to the PV panel and practically as close as to 90 degrees. Roots. Possible routes for the cables from an inverter, battery bank, charge controller, and PV array must be planned in a way that would have minimum utilization of cables and lower voltage drop in cables. The designer should choose between the efficiency and the cost of the system. The size of the standalone PV system depends on the load demand. The energy consumption of the load can be determined by multiplying the power rating or wattage of the load by its number of hours of operation. Thus, the daily total energy demand in Wather is calculated by adding the individual load demand of each appliance per day. A system should be designed for the worst case scenario, that is for the day when the energy demand is highest. A system designed for the highest demand will ensure that the system is reliable. If the system meets the peak load demand it will meet the lowest demand. But designing the system for the highest demand will increase the overall cost of the system. Let us discuss with an example. Consider a small house having an LED lamp of 40 watts works 12 hours per day, a refrigerator of 80 watts for 8 hours per day and a ceiling fan of 60 watts for 6 hours per day. Now let's find the number of solar panels required, rating and sizing of charge controller, inverter and batteries etc. Total load equals 1480 watt hours per day. The required wattage by solar PV system is 1480 multiplied by 1.3 equals 1924 where 1.3 is the factor used for energy lost in the system. Next, for finding the size and number of solar panels, we need to find peak wattage of solar panels. For that, we need to divide our required wattage of solar PV system by number of peak hours of sunshine available. Let us consider 3.2 hours as the number of peak sunshine hours. Here we took 3.2 hours as the peak sunshine hours to design our PV system for the worst case scenario. So peak wattage of solar panels equals 601.25 watts. Here let us consider 120 watts panels for this house, so we need to find how many of them is needed. 
For that, divide peak wattage by wattage of one solar panel, which is 601.25 by 120 equals 5. This way, the five solar panels each of 120 watts will capable to power up our load requirements. Now find the rating and size of the inverter. As there is only AC loads in our system for specific time, and our total required wattage is 40 watts plus 80 watts plus 60 watts equals 180 watts. Now, the rating of inverter should be 25% greater than the total load due to losses in the inverter. So 180 watts multiplied by 1.25, which is 225 watts. So we need minimum 225 watts inverter. Now find the size, rating and number of batteries. We can use this formula to find out the battery capacity in ampere hour. Here days of autonomy means the backup days required by the battery. Here we considered two days. The nominal voltage of deep cycle battery equals 12 volts, so the required capacity of batteries in ampere hour equals 483.6 ampere hour. This way, we need a 12 volt 500 ampere hour battery capacity for two days of autonomy. In this case, we may use four number of batteries each of 12 volt, 125 ampere hour connected in parallel. If the available battery capacity is 175 ampere hour, 12 volt, we may use three number of batteries. You can get the exact number of batteries by dividing the required capacity of batteries in ampere hour by the available battery ampere hour rating. And at last, to find the rating of charge controller, we need to look into the specification of our solar PV panel. We need the short circuit current value of our solar panel to design the charge controller. If it is written as ISC equals 8.8 ampere, then 8.8 ampere is the short circuit current of that particular panel. Here in this example we designed the number of panels as 5. The required rating of solar charge controller is equals 5 panels into 8.8 ampere into 1.25 equals 44 ampere, so you can use the next nearest rated charge controller which is 45 ampere. Note that this method can be used to find the exact size of MPPT solar charge controllers. So we completed the designing of the equipments of our solar PV system. Please check the description below to find the links to design find the exact amperage rating of wire and cables, switches, and plugs and circuit breakers. And also subscribe this channel for more videos related to energy, sustainability and nature.